talking about eigenvalues, eigenvectors. The last topic in this chapter. And in the next chapter, we'll be applying this to solving systems of linear differential equations. So remember the idea. If you have an n by n matrix, three by three in this picture. So here's a matrix A. If you multiply it on the right, which you have to do by a column vector, then you can imagine that you can think of A as a function which maps this vector to this vector. Take a different vector here, you get a different vector over here. So A takes you know, vectors here to vectors over here, A big. And I did, uh, I, just, I just worked this out. Uh, A takes that vector to that vector. But a peculiar thing happens if you find out what A does to this vector. A takes this vector to this vector, which is just minus two times <clears throat> the vector I started with. <clears throat> that doesn't hold true up here. There's no, this vector is not a multiple of that vector. And similarly, this vector is not a multiple of that vector. But this vector here is a multiple of that vector. This vector here, 2, 0, 2, is a multiple of 1, 0, 1. So that's all we're looking for. We're looking for the vectors v, which a maps onto a multiple of itself, or which a takes to a multiple of itself. What we want is a, V to equal lambda, V. That's what we want. And the question is, well, how are we going to find? I mean, we don't know lambda, we don't know V. Well, as I, I did this last time, I said, well, all right, let's, let's, let's bring the lambda, V over to the left. Let's factor out the V. I have to keep the order the same because multiplication is not commutative. A minus lambda identity times B is zero. This equation, this equation, same equation. You see, I times V is just V. So we want a non-zero vector V so that A minus lambda I times V is zero. This requires determinant a minus lambda i to be zero. Because this is a homogeneous system. You think of v as unknowns. Then this is a homogeneous system. We want it to have non-trivial solutions. This v is uh, going to be a non-zero vector. So the determinant a minus lambda i has to be zero. This gives us a way to calculate lambda. And once I know lambda, I can calculate v. Okay, number lambda is an eigenvalue if there is a non-zero vector v, so that a v is lambda v. We did this last time. To find the eigenvalues, find the values of lambda such that determinant a minus lambda i is zero. And I did a simple two by two. A minus lambda i is right here. The determinant of this, 2 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda minus 3. Work it out. Lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 5. Factors into lambda minus 5, lambda minus 1. So lambda 1 equal 5, lambda 2 equal 1 are the eigenvalues. So we're still. It gets a little more difficult when you go to 3 by 3. Calculations. You've got to calculate this determinant. 
And this one in particular, there's no obvious row to go across or column to go down. You just bite your tongue and make your choice. But this is what you get when you do that. And that's the approach I'm going to take throughout this section. I'm not going to sit down here and calculate that determinant. That's up to you to do. And I'm going to tell you what you get. You will be examined on this in a variety of ways. EMCX, online assignments, and most importantly, exam three. Okay, so it's a waste of our time for me to sit down and work out what that determinant is. You know how to calculate a three by three, you just do it. What you get in this case, well, let's go back here. Two by two, when you calculate the determinant, you get a polynomial of degree two. Three by three, Calculate the determinant, you get a polynomial of degree three. I might mention that some people, rather than looking at determinant A minus lambda I, some people prefer lambda I minus A. I think that's dumb to do that. I think I know why. We calculated here, I can I think. Determinant A minus lambda I, and notice I get minus lambda cubed plus lambda squared plus four lambda minus four. When you have an odd order determinant, this polynomial will always begin with a minus sign. Even order, plus sign, odd order, minus sign. The reason is one of the terms is just the product of those entries down the main diagonal and you can see it's a minus lambda times a minus lambda times a minus lambda, which is minus lambda cubed. Whereas in the two by two case, it's minus lambda times minus lambda, which is plus lambda squared. So in the odd order case, you'll always come out with a minus lambda cubed, and the purists don't like a polynomial like that and immediately multiply by minus one. So if you look at the determinant of lambda i minus a, then it comes out like this. So this right here is the determinant of lambda i minus a. But for reasons which will come become clear when we calculate eigenvectors, I much prefer a minus lambda i to lambda i minus a, and I'll point out why when we get there. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the uh, characteristic polynomial. Set it equal to zero. That's called the characteristic equation. We will see it's the same thing from differential equations, chapter uh, section three point three and three point seven. Okay, characteristic polynomial, characteristic equation. And the vector v, the non-zero vector v, such that a v is lambda v, is called the Eigen vector. Uh, Eigen is a uh, German word, uh, which means self. That is to say, a maps a vector onto itself. Oh, by the way, some people use uh, aka characteristic vector. I don't use that because too long to write out characteristic, and sometimes I don't spell it right. But many authors call it characteristic. Okay. So, we'll take an example. Did I give this example? I mean, determine a minus lambda. You can, you can do this in your head. It's 2 minus lambda times minus 1 minus lambda minus 4. Lambda squared minus lambda minus 6. So the characteristic equation is lambda squared minus lambda minus 6 equals 0. That factors. You get lambda 1 equal 3, lambda 2 equal minus 2. So these are the eigenvalues. Two by twos are calculate eigenvalues are very easy. Well, now we need to get the eigenvalue. If you've got an eigenvalue, it also has an eigenvector basically by definition. In fact, it has infinitely many eigenvectors. It's infinitely many of them. 
Okay, so how do we find the eigenvectors? So we'll take the eigenvalues one at a time. We'll look at lambda 1 equal to 3. Now, we want V, and let me write it, say, uh, X, Y. It's a vector, two components, such that A minus 3I times the vector X, Y is 0, 0. Remember, A minus lambda I back to here, uh, a minus lambda i times the vector v has to be zero. So we're just going to be solving a system of equations. That's what we want. What is a minus 3i? Well, it's going to, I'm going to put a, a, a 3 right here in, in the place of lambda. So a minus 3i is the matrix. I gotta go back here or I gotta find it here. Before I do that, let's write down A minus lambda i again. A minus lambda i is. Two minus lambda two. So A minus lambda I is 2 minus lambda 2. 2, is it minus 1 minus lambda? Minus 1 minus lambda. So there's A minus lambda I. So A minus 3 I is 2 minus 3 is a, a minus 1. 2, 2, and minus 3, this is a minus 4. Now here's what we want, right? So we want minus 1, 2, 2 minus 4 times the vector v, we want that to be 0, 0. Now this, if you multiply this out, it's just a system of equations. Augmented matrix. I'll just go right to the augmented matrix. Is minus 1, 2, 0, 2, minus 4, 0. Remember, I'm, I'm trying to solve. I'm trying to find x and y. So I want to solve this system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply row 1 by 2, add it to row 2, and that's my new row 2. Back to, you know, the very first section, solving the system of equations. And so what do we get? Minus 1, 2, 0. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. Of course, we'll always have zeros to the right of the bar. And so what does this tell me? This tells me that x is 2y. Y arbitrary. This has infinitely many solutions. There's only one equation here. Minus x plus 2y is 0. It says x is 2y. Y arbitrary. Think it any way you want. But not 0. Some people make the huge mistake of letting the arbitrary unknown be 0. If you let y be 0, then x is 0 which gives you 0, 0. Well, that's nothing. We know that 0, 0 always satisfies a homogeneous system. We're looking for non-trivial. So why arbitrary? Why not 0? I often pick something simple. I don't pick pi or e or 29. I'm going to let y equal 1. You know, something nice, easy. And then x is 2, right? So v is 2, 1. Suppose I pick y equal to 5. 
then x would be 10. And that would just be a multiple of 2, 1. Any multiple of this is also an eigenvector. Take a different y. You get a different x, but it's twice the y. And so you just get twice, you know, two times the value you chose for y. So it has infinitely many eigenvectors. They're all multiples of each other. So let me just make a note here. Infinitely many, in this case, eigenvectors, and in, in most of the cases, all multiples of 2, 1. You mean to go from here to here? No, from where you have the arrow. Or here. Oh, I just wrote down A minus lambda I so I could see it. Because I'm going to stick a 3 in there. OK? All right. And then, uh, and then, then, then this is A minus 3i right here. So I wanted to write down A. This is just for me. I wanted to, I'm going to put a 3 in place of the lambda. And so I want, to, I want to see it, so I make sure I write the results down correctly. So there's nothing to go from here to here. I just put lambda equal to 3 in here. That's all. OK. Now, perhaps here I can point out why I choose a minus lambda i rather than lambda i minus a. If I'm going to look at lambda i minus a, then I've got to switch the signs, all the signs of a. It's not so bad when a is 2 by 2. But when a is 3 by 3, you've got nine entries, and you've got to change all their signs. I'm bound to forget one of them somewhere. So I like a minus lambda i rather than lambda i minus a. I think that's a much better trade-off to the in little slight inconvenience of having a minus sign there. Rather than switching the signs of all the entries of the matrix. Okay. Well, let me enter here. Might as well do the other one. There's two eigenvalues, so I gotta get two eigenvectors. So we can look at land. Oops. We look at lambda 2 equal to 1. Now, again, I'm going to write down, I'm just going to write down the lambda i minus a. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean a minus lambda i. Just so I can see it. That's for me. Well, you don't have to do that. OK, so a minus lambda i was 2 minus lambda, 2, 2, minus 1, minus lambda. Okay, now we put lambda 2 equal to 1. So a minus 1i is, well, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2, 2, and minus 1, oops. Do I have a wrong sign there somewhere? This is minus 2. Oh, it's minus 2. What am I saying? Lambda 2 was minus 2. Sorry about that. So let's go. I don't know where I got the one. Lambda 2 was minus 2. OK. So what do we have? Uh, a minus. Can you handle this? A plus 2i. It's a minus or minus 2. You know, I look out to see these stunned looks. I, I'm unsure of myself. I really don't know. Okay, two minus and minus two is four, two, and then uh, two, one. Okay, find v. So that. Now you don't have to write all this out when you're doing it yourself. In fact, I'll abandon and do it all of this and. 
and uh, just go right to the to solving the system of equations. A minus minus two i times b equals zero zero. D here, I'm thinking of D as being uh, x1, x2. Previous one, I called it x1. I could call it x1, x2. I'm gonna, and I'll use, I'll, I'll use subscripts, because when we get to 3 by 3, you've got three unknowns. We'll go to 4 by 4, you've got four unknowns. And you start running out of letters, so we'll use subscripts. Okay, so what is this? We want 4, 2, 2, 1. <coughs> times x1, x2 equal to 0, 0. Augmented matrix. This is just a system of equations. 4x1 plus 2x2 is 0. 2x1 plus x2 is 0. So it's a, just a system. Augmented matrix. 4, 2, 0. 2, 1, 0. I'm solving for x1 and x2, so I'm going to row reduce. I'm going to rewrite this, because I like the 2 and the 1 and the 0 up top. You could certainly do this in your head just as easily. So I'm now going to multiply row 1 by minus 2, add it to row 2. That's my new row 2. And what I get is 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this says, you know, 2x2 2x1 plus x2 is 0. That says that x2 is minus 2x1, x1 arbitrary. In the 2x2 two two case, we don't have to be so stringent as to have a 1 in the 1-1 one, one position. I'm just trying to find x1 and x2. So this is a little more relaxed than uh, the first couple of sections of this chapter. What am I going to do? I'm going to pick x1 equal to 1. And what I do is I get the vector v equal to 1 minus 2. So I found the eigenvectors, and I, I found the eigenvalues, and then I take the eigenvalues to find the eigenvectors. That's it. That's the whole thing. Well, take this matrix. Determinant A minus lambda I, you can see, is 4 minus lambda minus 1, 4 minus lambda. Lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4. Characteristic equation, lambda minus 2 squared equals 0. Lambda 1 equals lambda 2 equals 2. So it has a repeated eigenvalue. And we'll find out it's not a problem here. But in the next chapter, it'll be a significant problem. Repeated eigenvalue. Okay, so we got the eigenvalues. So now we want to find the eigenvectors, and I'm going to write down again a minus lambda i is 4 minus lambda, I think it was a minus 1, 4 and minus lambda. I only got one eigenvalue, so we'll see what we get in terms of eigenvectors. So we put lambda 1 equal to 2. And we look at a minus 2i, and that is 2 minus 1, 4 minus 2. Eigenvector v equal to x1, x2 satisfies a minus 2i times x1, x2 equals 0, 0. A minus 2i, that's the eigenvector, onto 0 vector. So what is this? Here's the system. 2 minus 1, 0. 4 minus 2, 0 is my augmented matrix for this system. I'm going to multiply row 1. Actually, I can, yeah, I can multiply row 2, but I can, I'm going to multiply row 1 by minus 2, add it to row 2. That's my new row 2. What I get is 2 
minus one, zero, 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 zero. We'll always get a row of zeros. Okay? At least one row of zero. In this case, two by two, you can one is the maximum number of rows. But you have to get a row of zeros because this system has non-trivial solutions. Because that determinant was zero. Okay. So what does this say? This says 2x1 minus x2 is zero. It says x2 is 2x1. x1 arbitrary. I'll put x1 equal to 1. So x2 is 2. And we get the vector 1. That's it. All right, we're done. This is the Contrast this with the previous problem. I had two eigenvalues. I got two eigenvectors. Here I only have one eigenvalue. And I got one eigenvector. That's going to be a problem in the next chapter. But it doesn't make any difference here. All right. 5, 3, minus 6, minus 1. Characteristic polynomial. 5 minus lambda, 3 minus 6, minus 1 minus lambda. Lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 13. So now you see this is going to cause you some problems. Okay. Complex eigenvalues are certainly possible. It's easy enough to find the eigenvalues, even in a complex case. But the eigenvectors, you've got to do complex arithmetic. So let's find the eigenvectors. Oh, by the way, of course, you do notice that uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2 are conjugate to each other. A plus bi, A minus bi. The corresponding eigenvectors are conjugates of each other as well. OK? Complex eigenvalues, eigenvectors occur in conjugate pairs. So while uh, complex eigenvalues present the difficulty of doing complex arithmetic, you only have to do one of them. Because once you have one, you also have the other, because it's the conjugate. So we'll demonstrate that. If I could take a second to show you why. We have A times lambda, oops, sorry, A times V. A times V is lambda V. Suppose V was the eigenvector corresponding to 2 plus 3i. Then we know that A times V is 2 plus 3i times V. Now we take the conjugate. And this may, I may be talking about something about which you know nothing. So we take the conjugate. And A is real, so this just becomes A conjugate V is lambda conjugate, this is the conjugate here, is lambda conjugate times the conjugate of V. So I don't, generally speaking, you all know an awful about complex numbers to know that that's true, but it, it is true. The complex eigenvalues, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, no question curved pairs. The eigenvectors are also conjugate pairs. And that's a big help. All right, eigenvectors. So I'll just, I only have to do one of them. So I'll take, what was it, 2 plus 3i. And of course, I want to write down uh, a, uh, this is just so I can see it here. It'll be in front of you. So you don't have to write it down. It's on a separate page for me. 5 minus lambda, 3, and minus 6, minus 1 minus lambda, minus 6, minus 1 minus lambda. So we're looking at lambda 1 equal 2 plus 3i. So a minus 2 plus 3i times the identity is, this is the one I have to work with, so I have 5 minus uh, 2 plus 3i. 5 minus 2 is 3. So this is 3 minus 3i, 3, minus 6, 
And then I have minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3 minus 3i. Now we want 3 minus 3i, three, 3, minus 6, minus 3, minus 3i, three, times x1, x2. We want that to be 0, 0. Well, that's a system of equations. I'll write down the augmented matrix. 3 minus 3i, three, 3, 0, minus 6. Minus 3, minus 3i, and 0. Now you do see, I know you see, you can write this as 1 minus i, 1, and 0. And minus 2, minus 1, minus i, and 0. I just divided the first row by 3, and the second row by 3. OK. Well, now here's where the complex arithmetic comes in. One thing I could do, uh, what I want to do is figure out what to multiply this by to get a what? I want, I want to make this a zero, right? So I have to figure out what to multiply 1 minus i by so that the result is 2, right? So we want 1 minus i times z. Z is the, is the thing I'm trying to figure out. I want that to be 2. Right? So that when I multiply the first row by this z, this times z gives me 2 minus 2 is 0. Let me caution you. Of course this will be on your exam. In the differential equations context, so uh, I advise you to, as I always do, do some practicing. Question is, what the heck is z? z is 2 over 1 minus i. That's not a problem, but that doesn't help me very much. Of course, I can multiply numerator and denominator by 1 plus i. That doesn't change anything. You're all used to that. I know, you know, this is what, third or fourth grade? If you, had a, if you had a radical in the denominator, you, you had to get the radical out of the denominator. You multiply numerator and denominator by something which removes the radical. I'm thinking about something like 4 over 1 minus the square root of 2. When I was in grade school, I wasn't allowed to leave that square root of 2 in the denominator. But I was taught that what you do is multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Now this is a minus b times a plus b. So that's a minus a squared minus b squared, and the rest is done. Same idea with complex numbers, exactly. So this is, this is 2 plus 2i divided by 2, which is 1 plus i. All right, so we multiply row 1 by 1 plus i. We add that to row 2, and that's my new row 2. And what do we get? 1 minus i, 1, and 0. 1 plus i times 1 minus i is 2. Minus 2 is 0. 1 plus i times 1 is 1 plus i. Minus 1 minus i is 0. So, we get a row of zeros. We have to have a row of zeros. The second row has to be a multiple of the first row. Okay. And as a matter of fact, in the two by two case, the second row is always a multiple of the first row. You may not be easy to see what the multiple is. But in fact, all you really have to do is write that in the first row, because the second row is going to turn out to be zero. Well, I'll let you all figure that out. Okay, so what does this say? This says that x1, I'm sorry, yeah, x2, sorry. <clears throat> this augmented matrix says that x2 
is minus 1 plus i times x1, x1 arbitrary. Maybe I'll add a page so I can scrunch it all up here. So let's write that again. We have uh, x2 is minus 1 plus i times x1, x1 arbitrary. I'm going to, you know, I generally will set x1 equal to the, uh, the unknown equal to 1, generally. But if this turned out to have a fraction, I'd pick for x1 something which would remove the fraction. For example, if this had been halves here, I would have picked x1 equal to 2. So what do we get? We get the vector 1 minus 1 plus i, which is 1 minus 1 plus i times 0, 1. We want to write that in complex form. The eigenvalue, a plus bi, eigenvector, alpha plus i beta. I want to write it in a complex form. Okay, so this is V1. And I don't have to do anything now. V2 automatically is 1 minus 1 minus i times 0, 1. Okay, so complex roots are possible. That means complex eigenvalues. I'm sorry, it means complex eigenvectors, it means doing complex arithmetic. So that's the way it is. Uh, as I've said, if A plus BI is an eigenvalue with eigenvector alpha plus beta I or I beta, then A minus BI is an eigenvalue with alpha minus beta I is a corresponding eigenvalue. Okay, we'll up the ante a little bit, go to 3 by 3. Here's my matrix. Here is determinant A minus lambda I. Here is the characteristic polynomial. Here is the characteristic equation. To set this equal to zero. We would give you a hint on exam three. We'll give you a little hint. We'll tell you that, for example, three is an eigenvalue for this matrix. Then you're on your own. You calculate this determinant. What I would do if I were doing it, I would plug in 3 to make sure it worked. Because if 3 doesn't work, then you've made a mistake. Assuming we have to make a mistake. We check them out beforehand. Okay, so we got the eigenvalues. Now we have to get the eigenvectors. That means I have to go through this three times. So we'll start out, lambda 1 equal to 3. Okay, so I'm going to write down the a minus lambda i again. 4 minus lambda minus 3, 5. 4 minus lambda minus 3, 5. Minus 1, 2 minus lambda minus 1. Minus 1, 2 minus lambda minus 1. And minus 1, 3. And what was it? 2 minus lambda. Minus 2 minus lambda. So here is A minus lambda I. A minus 3I, I'm putting lambda equal to 3, is 1 minus 3, 5. Minus 1, looks like A minus 1, minus 1. And minus 1, 3. And mine, uh, uh, where am I? Minus one. Minus two. Wait a minute. Minus five. Minus five. Okay, now of course we're looking for A minus three I times X one, X two, X three equal to zero, zero, zero. Do I have a mistake? Third row is minus, right? Yeah. Thank you. Isn't that neat? The, thir the third row is, a, is a, the negative of the first row, right? <coughs> okay. So
So this here is the since I'm going to write down the augmented matrix. One minus three five zero minus one minus one minus one zero minus one three minus five zero. That immediately becomes one minus three five zero minus one minus one minus one zero 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 zero. Right? Just add the first and third rows and make that the new third row. Uh, row, row one plus row two. I could have done this. I could have done this simultaneously. I should have done it simultaneously. But that's okay. One minus three, five, zero. I'm adding this so I get a zero. I get a minus four. I get a four and a zero. Which become one minus three five zero zero one minus one zero 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 zero. Here is why it was important for you to understand and know how to write down the solution set when you have infinitely many solutions. This this is where you, this is a place where you really need to know that. So what does this say? This says that x2 is x3. The second row says x2 is x3. x1 is minus 3x2 plus 5x3, which is what? 2x3. <coughs> x2 is x3. So minus 3x3 plus 5x3 is 2x3. <coughs> oh, I got the signs backwards. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, 3 minus 5. I was looking at the signs there rather than the moving them over. So this says x1 is minus 2x3. Alright, x3 arbitrary. You know, the thing that bothers me about people just getting up and walking out, <laughs> the thing that bothers me is because come the time uh, right around the final exam or right after, these same people come into my office and say, God, I have a C in this class. And I say, the hell with that? Every day you walk out in the middle. You know, forget it. Right? I'll give them nothing. Unless you make 190 on the exam. <laughs> That's the only way. Okay, so I'll pick x3 equal to 1. All right, x3 equals 1. Okay, so what does that tell V1 is, uh, what, minus 2, 1, 1. And we're only one third done, right? We still have to do, yes, sir. Just don't pick zero. Hmm? Sure, you want to do that? I should have lectured. I should have. You want to pick two? Oh, oh, what do you mean in here? Well, I don't know. I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of. Look, we spent some time in sections five, two, five, three, right, where we row reduce, start at the bottom, work. I don't care. There, you know, you kind of want to do it that way because that's the way it's set up. Here, oh, you can actually, yeah, make anything you want the, the arbitrary class. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm just following the, kind of following the routine. That's all. Okay. Well, let's see. <clears throat> well, we're going to have another problem today, of course. Um, so let's we'll do another we'll do another uh, I vector just so you know just so we can see some done. Okay, so four minus lambda a minus lambda I, four minus lambda minus three 
minus 1, 2, minus 1. Minus 1, 2, minus lambda, minus 1. Minus 1, 3, minus 2, minus 1. I have to be careful because to flip them back and forth is easy for me to you know, write a number down on drop a sign. So now we take lambda 2 equal to 2. I wrote them down 3, 2, minus 1, because that's just the way I wrote them down. The order doesn't matter. You're going to be finding all three. So the order in which you find them doesn't matter. Okay, that's right. So uh, we're looking at lambda 1, or lambda 2 equal to 2. Can I go right to the augmented matrix? All I'm going to do is stick a 2 in place of a lambda and put a column of zeros on the right. Okay, I might as well just go right to the augmented matrix. 4 minus 2 is 2, minus 3 is 5, minus 1, 2 minus 2 is 0, minus 3, minus 1, 3, minus 2, minus 2 is minus 4, 0, 0, 0. And I have to row reduce. What am I going to do? I guess I'll interchange rows 1 and 2. And I'm going to multiply uh, uh, row 1, you know, you know, I'm going to multiply by minus 1. And multiply by minus 1. Okay, so we get 1, 0, 1, 0, 2 minus 3. 5, 0, minus 1, 3, minus 4, 0. Okay, row 1 by minus 2, add it to row 2, there's my new row 2. Row, row 1 plus row 3, that should be my new row 3. And what do we get? 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, minus 3, 6. Oops, that's it. Multiply by minus two. You get a three. Zero. Zero, three, minus three, zero. And I can see, we might as well become adults here. This will be zero, one, minus one, zero, dividing by three and switching the sign. The last row is just a multiple of the second row. So 0, 0, 0, zero. <coughs> Okay, so now we can read off. This is even a little simpler than the previous one. This says that x2 is x3, x1 is minus x3, x3 arbitrary. <coughs> I'm going to set x3 equal to minus 1. Oops, minus 1, because I feel like it. And what I get then is 1 minus 1 minus 4 v2. When I am typing a column vector, I kind of prefer to have the first component positive. So that's why I picked x3 to the minus 1. If I use my usual routine, I would have picked x3 equal to 1. And then got Minus one, minus one, one. Whatever. Minus one, one, one. Okay. Did I do this right? I think I got a mistake. Uh, no, that's right. Yeah, it's okay. All right. So then you go ahead and you do, you know, now lambda three equals one. Then you go through the whole routine again. I'll skip. Okay, <laughs> So here's my matrix. By the way, you know, the way we make these problems up is we decide what we want for eigenvalues and work backwards to produce a matrix. Okay? So
So you see, you can come out with some bad looking numbers this way. I mean, so then we adjust and fiddle around and tweak it. In any case, here's my matrix. Here's the characteristic. Uh, here is the, here is you know here's the a minus lambda i. Determine an a minus lambda i and mold and work it out. Minus lambda cubed plus lambda squared minus 39 lambda plus 45. If you want nice eigenvalues, often your you know your numbers in the matrix uh, are not so nice sometimes. Or in this case, the characteristic equation. But that factors very nicely into lambda minus 3 squared times lambda minus 5. So this has a double root, a repeated eigenvalue. OK, now we find the eigenvector. Might as well hit the big one first, right? Lambda 1 equal lambda 2 equal 3. So A minus lambda I is, I like to have this in front of me. 4 minus lambda, 1 minus 1. 4 minus lambda, 1 minus 1. 2. 5 minus lambda. <coughs> minus 2. 1, 1, 2 minus lambda. 1, 1, 2 minus lambda. You know, since I made my little speech, more people left. <laughs> well, you know. Now, as I said, the only time I care is at the end of the semester that people come in and start begging. And, and I know damn well these are people that either don't come to class, how do I know that you don't come to class? Oh, darn it. No, I'm not that dumb. Uh, Boppers don't mean anything. I mean, if I'm enrolled in this class, uh, I have three friends. I say, look, you go on Monday, I'll go on Wednesday, you go on Friday. And he takes three forms, right? Right? So, not that dumb. Uh, that's the thing that disturbs me is people that don't go to class, they go to class, they get up and leave. Then they come in, you know, when they're in danger of getting less than a C. They're an engineer, got to have at least a C. They got a 29 average. You know, uh, last semester I got an email from somebody. Got a miserable average. He says, can't you just bump me a little? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. Okay, so can I go right to the augmented matrix? All I'm going to do is put a 3 in there and write down 0 on the right. So 4 minus 3 is a 1, 1, minus 1, 0. 2, 2, minus, oh, this is just lovely. 1, 1, minus 1, 0. This is an answer to everyone's prayer. 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Wow. So this says that x1 is minus x2 plus x3. x2, x3, arbitrary. See, two rows of zeros means two Arbitrary unknowns. Pick them any way you want. Not both zero. Now look, you know, I got three eigenvalues. I want three eigenvectors. <coughs> All right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get, because I have two arbitrary unknowns, I can pick them independently so that I get two independent vectors. So when you have a repeated eigenvalue, it's possible you can get two independent eigenvectors. If we go back to right here, right? I had a double eigenvalue, a repeated eigenvalue, and only one eigenvector. Here, I have a, wherever it is, I have a repeated eigenvalue, and I'm going to have two eigenvectors. Well, that's the way it is. Sometimes you have a repeated eigenvalue, you might get two. You might only get one. You've got to, you've got to know what's going on. This, these are the possibilities. 
Okay, how do I get too many independent eigenvectors? What I usually do is say, well, look, I'm going to set x2 equal to 1, x3 equal to 0, and then that will give me v1 equal to minus 1, 1, 0. Then I'm just going to switch that. x2 equals 0, x3 equal to 1. I'll just flip it. They cannot be multiples of each other. 1, 0, 0, 1 are independent. All right? 1, 0, 0, 1 independent. Therefore, the corresponding v's here are going to be independent. Okay, and what is it in this case? It's 1, 0, 1. Okay. Well, then, of course, I should take lambda 3 equal to 5. Okay, go through the routine again. So, uh, A minus 5i is minus 1, 1, minus 1. 2, 0, minus 2, I'm picking 5 up here, and 1, 1, and a uh, 2 minus 5, is that a minus 3, I think? So I have to solve the system of equations. Can I put the first row, the last row up top? Sure. 1, 1, minus 3, 0, you can do, all, do almost anything you want. I might as well divide through by 2. 1, 0, minus 1, 0. And uh, what is it? Minus 1, 1, minus 1. Zero. Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply by minus 1 and add here, right? So I'm going to have 1, 1, th minus 3, and 0. By the way, I'm just going to get one row of zeros here. Because it's a single eigenvalue, one row of zeros. Double eigenvalue, you might get two rows of zeros, you might not. I have an expected example. Okay, zero, minus one. This is now a three minus one is a two, and a zero, and add zero, one, minus two, zero. And I'll add a page. You can see the last row is all zeros. Next step. Just add the second and third row. So what we wind up with is 1, 1, minus 3, 0. 1, 1, minus 3, 0. Minus, or 0. Minus 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This says that x2 is 2x3. Right? The second row. x2 is 2x3. x1 is minus x2 plus 3x3. And so this is just x3, because x2 is 2x3. x3 arbitrary. I'll put x3 equal to 1. And what do we get? v3 is x1 is x3, that's a 1. Uh, x2 is 2x3, and x3 is 2. That's the one I get. I can pick a person at random, let them pick a number at random, write down the corresponding vector, and it would just be a multiple of 1, 2, 1. All right. In other words, I think this is getting near the end of the thing. Okay, here's the matrix. There's the term A minus lambda I. There it is. Characteristic equation. Lambda plus 2 squared times lambda minus 4 equals 0. Lambda 1 equal lambda 2 equal minus 2 is a double eigenvalue. Brush up on the fact that you have few answers. Repeat it. Eigenvectors. Lambda 1, lambda 2, 
A minus lambda I is minus 3, 1 minus 3. Minus 3 minus lambda, 1 minus 1. Minus 7, 5 minus 1. Minus 7, 5 minus lambda, minus 1. Minus 6, 6. Minus 6, 6. Oops. And minus 2 minus 1. Okay, we're going to put uh, minus 2 in here, for lambda, and I'm going to write down the all better measure. So I have minus 3, minus a minus 2, is a minus 1, 1, minus 1, 0, minus 7, 7, minus 1, 0, minus 6, 6, uh, minus two, minus or minus, that is zero. Okay, uh, which is, now look, I'm gonna, uh, let's go ahead and multiply by minus one. One, minus one, one, zero. Minus seven, seven, minus one, zero. Minus six, six, zero, zero. I think you can see that uh, that minus seven, seven, minus six, six are gonna cancel out. Last row is gonna be zeros. So I'm gonna multiply by seven, right? Row one by seven, add it to row two, row one by six, add it to row three, one minus one, one, zero, zero, zero. And this is now uh, 7 minus 1 is 6, 0. And where are we? I multiply by 6, 0, 0, 6, and 0. Which immediately becomes 1 minus 1, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. This tells me that x3 is 0. And x1 is x2. x2 arbitrary. I'll set x2 equal to 1. And I get v1 equal to, uh, what is x? Uh, 1, 1. So that's the deal. I could give you examples of eigenvalues of multiplicity three. Turns out you have all the sets we have to go to a four by four matrix. Uh, and I'm not going to do that now. But maybe next time I'll bring you in one with a multiplicity three. And really, I have to adjust it so one time you get three independent vectors, another time you get only two, or you might get only one. Okay, but contrast the, these last two examples. Here we have a repeated eigenvalue, but got two independent eigenvectors, right? Here we have a repeated eigenvalue, only one eigenvector. This is just out linear algebra we're doing now, so who cares? I mean, all I want to do is find the eigenvalues, eigenvectors. In the next chapter, you have to use the eigenvalues, eigenvectors. And this case here is going to present for you a big, big problem, which I will demonstrate. Uh, what's the next day? Next week. Next week we'll do chapter six, and then the following week is the exam, which reminds me. Tonight, to, not tonight, tomorrow night, right? Well, midnight tonight, twelve oh one. You want to be online and schedule it, right? Right? Tonight. Okay, so I don't want anybody emailing me or coming in and saying, oh, I forgot to schedule my exam. Right? You all are here, so.
so I assume you all have heard that night's the night to schedule. So I will not accept somebody who says, oh, I can't take, I couldn't schedule my exam. You know, I can only take it on Saturday. You knew, night's the night. Yeah. Uh, what we use, so you, you have to reschedule the fund. And so you, yeah, I hate it when people come in and say, look, I have a mechanical engineering exam at the same time as my scheduled exam for you. I said, well, what's the problem? Just reschedule the engineering exam. I mean, you know, you're gonna, you have to reschedule one, why pick mine? That's fine, you know, pick the other one. Well, in any case, we, you, we, we were working. It happens from time to time, we work it out. You know what your exam schedule is. You know when our exams are. You're gonna schedule this exam well in advance of the final. So there shouldn't be a conflict. Okay, so here's some facts. D1, D2 of the DK are eigenvectors for distinct eigenvalues. They are independent. Distinct eigenvalues give you linearly independent eigenvectors. Right. Eigenvalues, eigenvectors occur in conjugate pairs. Now here's an interesting thing. Take an n by n matrix with eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda n. Then the determinant of a is basically the product of the eigenvalues. Right. The determinant of A is the product of I. I can take this. Let's see, I don't want to take too much time here. Uh, I, I guess I'll show you that. I'll tell you two things. I'll tell you two things. Take a matrix. Uh, let me add a page. I'll do this quickly, and then I'll, this is where we'll start next time. Uh, a, N by N. A11 plus A22 plus A33 plus ANN, that's the main diagonal, equals minus sum of eigenvalues. This is called the trace. The sum of the entries on the main diagonal. I said once, that's kind of the heart of the matrix. The sum of the entries on the trace, uh, the sum of the entries on the main diagonal is simply the sum of the eigenvalues. The determinant is minus one to the n times lambda one times lambda two times lambda n, since we're the product of the eigenvalues. I'll show you that next time. Now we have a bunch of equivalences. Ax equal b has a unique solution. Reduced row echelon form is the identity. The rank of a is n. a has an inverse. Determinant a is not zero. Zero is not an eigenvalue. Zero is an eigenvalue means that the determinant is zero, which means it doesn't have an inverse, and so on. So, exam three, we give you a few of these, the multiple choice, uh, not multiple choice, two fold questions. Just make them up, permute all these things, come out with a statement, which is either always true, sometimes true, never true. Okay, so let's quickly go to the pucker. This is pucker number 11. <laughs> 